Hello my soccer universe, in round 18 of the 23-24 Austrian Bundesliga and the first one in the new year 2024, Lusk is facing Austria Klagenfurt from the capital of the southernmost uh, Austrian Bundesland or province if you would like, state, province, uh, Klagenfurt itself. And as always is a good opportunity to look a little bit at this club, which on the face of it, with an official founding date of uh, the 19th of January 2007, is a very, very young club. But as always in Austria, there's a whole lot to, to it. And while well, the history of this club, as we will see, is a relative short one, although overall, at least as of late, a successful one, uh, there's a little prehistory that I need to include there, because let's put it that way. Uh, soccer in Klagenfurt is not necessarily a success story, despite Klagenfurt being one of the biggest cities in Austria. It's and Kärnten, a very popular tourism uh, destination as well, where it would make sense to have a little bit uh, of soccer as well to add. Um, so, join me here in this little journey to Klagenfurt, where we look a little bit about on the club itself, a little bit on the fan base, although, as we will see, there's not too much to talk. We'll talk about the convoluted history, not only of Austria Klagenfurt as well, but also a little bit about the prehistory, which is really, really interesting, because in a way, Austria Klagenfurt is the fourth iteration of trying to making it successful. So, as I already said in the introduction, Austria Klagenfurt, or this Austria Klagenfurt, I have to say, uh, has been founded on the 19th of January 2007 with the traditional colors of purple and white. Whenever a team is called Austria, uh, usually would associate uh, purple and white with it because of Austria Vienna. Why do I say traditional colors? Not because of the Austria Vienna connection, although there might be something like that. Uh, no, because there used to be another Austria Klagenfurt, uh, a club that actually ceased to exist around 2010-2011, but that was called Austria Klagenfurt, I think, until 1999. And this uh, team is more or less seen in, as a successor in spirit to that team. Interesting enough, as we'll see, this team is actually probably a little bit more successful than the previous version was. Uh, we have also the interesting fact that Austria Klagenfurt, although founded in 2007, didn't start playing until 2010 when they made a cooperation with St. Stefan in Lavantal, tiny town, uh, and uh, to uh, start then in the Regionalliga Mitte, so they made the co co cooperation with those, which is the third tier, which is three tiered in Aus Austria, Mitte is the central section, we have an eastern, a central, and a western section where they also relied a little bit on the players from the previous team um, that were there. But again, more on that in the history se uh, section as well. Then, the, where is the team playing? Uh, the team is playing in the now called 28 Black Arena. It is the Wörthersee Stadion, of course, uh, which is was built for Euro 2008 in Klagenfurt. And it was one of those controversial stadiums. You know, most of the stadiums that were built uh, in Austria for the Euros, the one in Salzburg, the one in Innsbruck, and the one in Klagenfurt were originally intended to be built up to Euro standards and then to be sized down to a more uh, amenable standard, like 15 to max 20,000, as is normal uh, for Austria. Uh, in Innsbruck, this happened rather quickly. In Klagenfurt, the stadium was so beautiful, they kept it up there, although at the time they didn't really have a team. And in Salzburg, they also kept it up, uh, but there it actually made more sense, but it cost also quite some controversy. But there we are getting off topic here. But the uh, stadium in Klagenfurt is definitely one of the most beautiful ones in Austria. And fortunately, there is no Bundesliga action there. However, as you can imagine, the stadium is really, really oversized. Which leads us very uh, nicely to the fan base. And that's one of the sad things. You have a beautiful stadium. You have a team that is mildly successful. I, will, I would say, especially from when you consider from where they come from. However, 
they don't get a lot of fans into that stadium. And the first thing you need to know is that soccer is not the number one sport in the southernmost province in Carinthia. It is ice hockey. This is absolutely ice hockey territory and in Klagenfurt you have the most successful ice hockey club, the KAC or Klagenfurt Athletic Club, uh, playing in red, red or white, who dominates the sporting scene. So uh, this has to be burned down. So it has always been a soccer play second fiddle. However, there have been many political movements to at least have a soccer club there that should uh, attract some sponsors, blah, blah, blah. And that this also is happening in Canton. However, to be honest, it never really, really happened. Of course, a big problem for the fan base, and we'll talk about this in the history part that comes next, uh, is that due to the complications, especially over the past two decades, uh, where politics and many insolvencies, the trust in having a successful soccer team is just not there. And that's why it's really, really hard for the team to actually uh, build a big fan base as well, on top of not being the number one team in town. And I think this team would really deserve a much, much smaller stadium with a much better support because of that because you see the away section is usually quite nicely filled and then there's the block of home fans and there are some fan clubs that really followed their team team around and i remember when they were visiting Linz uh in spring in 23 there were also a few fans coming and the team is overall uh as i said quite successful uh so it's a little bit sad to see but again i think i don't want to put this down as much to the fan base itself and that there's no interest per se in the team it is definitely the fact that ice hockey is king in town but also the stadium is way way too big okay and i teased it so much already so let's look a little bit about the history but i actually want to start with the prehistory of the existing austria klagenfurt because there used to be an austria klagenfurt before that was founded in 1920 did not play a big role over for most of the time, but they had a glory period in the 80s where I think they had um, a series of seasons in the Bundesliga, which they didn't have before, uh, reaching as high as an eighth place and also beating the dominant team of the time, Austria for three seasons in a row at home. So uh, these are still considered the glory years. However, by the late 80s, the team got relegated and quickly also relegated to the third tier so the glory days were definitely over and now here comes the politics into play and while we could probably spend another uh 15 minutes on politics in canton uh or carinthia which is the Engl english version i don't want to waste that it was there was a big movement to get a professional team from canton slash Klagenfurt back into the Bond Bundesliga and so there was a partnership with nearby town Villach and there's a whole relationship between Klagenfurt and Villach that is very teasing you know right, right because those two are the two big towns in the province that are also of a roughly even size however Villach and Kärnten do it together and they were then in 1997 renamed into FC Kärnten and at first project promotion did not work that well however come uh, in the 99-2000 season this team actually became successful they got promotion they also won the Austrian Cup and after gaining promotion they immediately qualified for Europe for three seasons in in a row which were the highest finishes for uh, this uh, for a, a team from Kärnten up to date I think however with the successes of course coaches were uh, uh, changed players were mo moving on you could replace them but it very quickly got into a spiral where there was no stability there and you found yourself in a uh, relegation duel with uh, Sturm Graz where you missed out by three points and you're going down in 2004 into the second league again so a very short very successful stint ends in rele relegation and one immediately wanted to get promoted again however it didn't work out and then FC Kärnten was just languishing there and you had a new stadium built and you wanted to have a first league team there. In addition, financial troubles were also here hitting and then there was the big discussion. What do we do? We're building this brand new stadium, uh, but we have a team that is more or less in intensive care. So they decided to found SK 
Austria Kärnten by buying the license from another professional team situated here close in Linz. So there's a first uh, connection, Pushing. And so Pushing basically transforms into SK Austria Kärnten, moving the franchise, if you would like, which was never heard before in Austria. Uh, and wouldn't you know it, the team also gets a few new, uh, a few players from the existing FC Kärnten. So the two exist in parallel. However, SK Austria Kärnten, not Klangfurt, Kärnten, was a complete disaster, uh, insolvent, almost no time. The main sponsor got bust as well. There was a whole political upheaval around 2008, where everything in Kärnten basically went bust. And the team itself dissolved after only three years in existence. And the same thing happened to the small FC Kärnten. And it's based on this background that Austria Klagenfurt get back uh, founded and they start to play in the Aus uh, in Austria again as an Austria Klagenfurt. And we already said they had this uh, cooperation with uh, St. Stefan in Lavantal, where they start in the third tier. Uh, Uh, at the time, Austria Klagenfurt, and now we're starting the real his, his history of the current team, Austria Klagenfurt uh, were a membership um, club. However, they had the option to get a well-known um, club uh, president in Peter Svetitz, who oversaw not only the successful rise of uh, GRK, but also the financial collapse. And then he was uh, in, at Wiener Neustadt, so he comes in and they change everything to make him the alone uh, boss of the club. Therefore, Austria Klagenfurt was not a membership club any, anymore. And for the most Oh, for, for, for the early years, they were finishing 7, 6, 8, 5 in the mid tier. However, in 14, 15, they finish first and they get promoted into the second league. In the second league, of course, they were relegation candidate from the beginning. Uh, however, they would have survived. The problem is because of financial troubles. And I have not mentioned. Almost from the get-go, they got some players from the old FTF, 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 FTF there were some uh, legal troubles. They were from the get-go, they, they had to uh, survive an insolvency procedure. And financial troubles are still a big deal in Klagenfurt. Uh, and because of that, they survive on the pitch in the Erste Liga in 15-16. Erste Liga meaning the second league, which is a whole different story. However, they don't get the license and they have to go back down. They are, at first, it seems like they're going, uh, uh, they're not recovering well. But in 1718, they finished fifth. However, thanks to a league reform, four teams got promoted, and one of the teams that finished ahead of uh, Austria Klagenfurt did not apply for a pro license. So Austria Klagenfurt, even in fifth place, can make it to the second tier. And after the first uh, year back, so after two years being in the second, uh, being in the third tier, they're back in the second tier, and they again survive. And the era Svetitz ends there because a German businessman takes over and also pulls uh, with uh, all the debts that the club had as well. And wouldn't you know it, the team actually got a little bit more so, so successful in the following season. They finished second, and then. The big one. In the Corona uh, times in 2021, they finished the league in third place. However, through another um, kind of look, Liefering in second place is of course the amateur team of Red Bull Salzburg and voluntarily does not want to get promoted. Same thing also for the first place team, Blau Weiss Linz, uh, who did not see, uh, the, who, who saw they could not fulfill, there was no stadium for, for them, that they could not actually get promoted into the top league. And so they, from very early on, although they were uh, playing for first, first place, they said we're not going up. And so it is Austria Klagenfurt, who, as a third place team, of course, cannot get the game direct promotion. However, they're paired with the St. Burton and they absolutely steamroll St. Burton. And so, after just about 10 years of existence, they made it back into the Bundesliga. And under a well-known, 
I would say great, but also a little bit controversial coach in Peter Packold. He's very much of the old guard, but he's also the last coach that's got the championship for Rapid Vienna. They not only make it to the Bundesliga, they also established themselves and had two sixth place finishes, meaning they twice qualified for the group of the top six and they never have to worry about relegation. And from where this team is coming, and with all the financial difficulties they had, I have that is a major achievement. In the current state, uh, it's a very interesting era for Austria Klagenfurt. On the pitch, you're really, really successful. Uh, given the means that, that you have finishing twice in sixth place and again being in the running for another sixth place, uh, top six finish at least, uh, shows you that you're actually working well on, 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 on the pitch. And I think it's very much down to Peter Packold having really built something great here. And uh, the team, while losing players here, here and there, they always have enough resources to replace them. However, uh, you're playing also in a beautiful stadium that is just way too big uh that's the problem but you know there would be potential there however money 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 as always in klagenfurt it is about money in there it also doesn't help that you have a uh, probably even more successful local rival a little bit up the hill from you that also takes a little bit the media attention uh, way. However, I still would characterize them as a well-run club. Uh, a club that is on paper debt free and all the um, they uh, had a negative re result that they published in, in, in November, but uh, they don't they don't all own anything, for instance, to a bank. Uh, however, whatever they own, uh, the current investor is actually uh, covering and they are paying their stuff and they're liquid enough. However, it's not rosy, rosy times. Uh, I think this will take some time. And also rebuilding the fan base will have to play a big role there. I also am a little bit worried if uh, Peter Packold says he had enough over whatever is there and succession plan in place. Or uh, how long can you live with having to replace your best players every now and then? But on the other side, at the moment, the basic structure of the team seems to be well built. Now, when it comes with the rivalry with Lusk, uh, to be honest, there is none. <laughs> because, you know, uh, uh, Lusk is on the north side of the Alps, Klagenfurt is on the south side of, of the Alps. So no natural rivalry can develop. However, uh, given Lusk's own travails, uh, you played Klagenfurt actually quite a little bit so far. Not only in the uh, top tier, where you had uh, seven games so far, uh, this being now the upper outcome of being the eighth. You played them four times in the second league, you played them three times in the cup, and you also played them four times in the third tier for all the season that uh, you were in the third tier. And uh, Klangford was always lagging behind uh, Lusk in that sense a little bit. Uh, the positive thing is that um, from a Lusk, Lusk specific, Austria Klangford has never beaten Lusk. Also, Klangford has never beaten Lusk, and there are. Uh, it's one of the one of the things so far, even the Indian Bundesliga, when Klangford have been playing well and Lusk not doing so well, Lusk still managed to not lose against them. So uh, there, um, you like to see them. Let's put it that way. For completeness' sake, I should also mention uh, the head-to-head -head against the previous Austria Klangford slash FC Kärnten, where it was similarly paused, but if however there were a, a whole lot more losses in the Bundesliga, five losses uh, as compared to twelve wins and seven draws. A uh, different story than in the second league, uh, where it was a little bit more balanced, and it was definitely also in the, in, the, in, in, in the cup that at home you had a much better record than away from home and no. I guess I also have to mention that the worst loss uh, at home for Lusk in history happened of course against FC Kärnten a 0-8 in 2004 which at the time was probably the low point of my of me being a Lusk fan. Lastly, there's another interesting connection between the two teams uh, that happened in the fall of uh, 21 when Lask had to play in the Conference League and the new stadium is still being built. There was no available stadium and so Lask actually played their home games in the stadium in Klagenfurt 
which is a pretty long trek to say the very least. However, it was overall a successful stint with two wins and one draw. I have also an interesting personal connection because the first game that I saw, and it was just a little bit more than a week after my second daughter was born, I watched, of course, also also also, also Klangfurt, which at that time had been quite a while. Uh, I didn't go that frequently to to to, to the stadium, but I still re remember that um, I was, you know, beaming from having a newborn at home. But also, and I was so happy that on this visit I could watch Lask as well, who were back on their rise and to the current rise. I think it was the first Oliver Glasner season, and it was a win too. Now, this upcoming game means a whole lot more to Klagenfurt than it does to Lusk. Lusk, uh, having just lost the cup game, uh, is in a very safe third spot uh, with a little bit small chance, you know, points game slash to maybe limit the distance to uh, Salzburg and Sturm who play each other in the, this round. But Klagenfurt is in a real battle for a top six spot together with the other Kärnten team, Wolfsburg, together with Rapid Vienna and together with Austria Vienna. Uh, potentially Hartberg could get pulled in there as well. So you have five teams vying for three spots and it would be first time in the Bundesliga that Klagenfurt does not finish in the top six. As I said, currently they hold sixth spot. And overall, the schedule doesn't look all that bad. Now, for them, getting something in Linz will probably mean a whole lot because this is not, a, given the history, the history, the history, a team that they have never beaten. Uh, this is not um, a place where you say we go there to get three points, but if you get, get, get a point, you actually have won something as well. I also would not say, I mean, for Lask, it would be a, a moral boost to get a win here, but in the grander scheme of, of things with five rounds to go, um, you know, you having the top six finish guaranteed. If you want to do something more and if you want to maybe you could get for a second or third place, place, then probably you should get a win. I'm hoping for a nice game. The last time we played Klang, Klang Foot, I actually, this was one of the most enjoyable games. Let's see if this will happen as well. So I hope you enjoyed my little journey to Klagenfurt, including prehistory and history of the current club. It's an overall interesting club. I really wish for the team, uh, I think Klagenfurt, especially with that stadium, really deserve a successful team, a team that established itself in the Bundesliga. There is enough there to actually have this. It's just that the fans have to gain trust again and the product on the field needs to be good and the, uh, the club needs to avoid further financial mishaps. In any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this little e excursion. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!